and it was like four and a half years in to OpenAI. And we, we hadn't started thinking we were ever going to make products, but eventually it became clear that because of the scaling laws and the amount of capital we needed, um, we were going to have to go build a really big company. And so you need to have a product to have a company. And we had this model called GPT-3, and we were trying, I like was turning up the urgency on the company to figure out a product, and we just couldn't. It wasn't good enough. It was cool, but it wasn't good enough to make something that worked. And I remember that Paul Graham had this advice that always stuck with me, which is, you should always make an API. No matter what, you should make an API. It's just, there's like, good stuff will happen. So out of ideas to make a product, we said, well, let's like crowdsource this to the world, and we'll put GPT-3 into an API, and maybe somebody will figure out something to do with it. The whole world figured out exactly one thing to do with it. The only thing that made money with GPT-3 was these copywriting applications. I actually forget the company's names now, but there were like a few companies that very quickly became like billion plus valuation companies that were just using GPT-3 to generate copy for um, websites to like resell. And Jasper, things like Jasper, that. Jasper, yeah. Um, and, and that was it. People tried other stuff, but no other companies worked. However, we had this thing called the playground where you could like test prompts and see what you were going to get back. And that was sort of the sleeper hit. People, some people, not a lot, but some people would just chat with that thing all day. And it was before we had figured out RLHF and before we had even GPT 3.5. So it wasn't very good, but there was like clear user signal that people wanted to talk to the models. And given that that was the only thing besides copywriting that had real traction, we said, well, maybe like this is just the product we should build. 